Hey guys, today we're going to be working on creating a cutscene system. So I get a lot of questions about this topic, which is totally understandable. Cutscenes, which we can just describe as a scripted sequence of events, are a common system in modern games. They can be a great way to illustrate certain actions, emphasize or add emotion to a particular moment, or develop the plot in your game. But actually programming a cutscene system can be quite an undertaking. So I'm going to walk you through the thought process of what we need to make such a system. Now, before we begin, I'm hoping you already have a basic project set up and are relatively comfortable with coding and navigating in GameMaker. The system I'm going to show you today is going to be using scripts and arrays. And I'm also going to be making reference to switch statements and object states. So if you're familiar with these concepts, then great. Otherwise, you may want to pause and Google around or watch some other tutorials before watching this one. All right, so right here, I have a room that I have already gone about setting up. And this is just to demonstrate what the cutscene system is gonna look like in the end. So these right here are two different kinds of trigger objects. So the pink one is a trigger that once it's activated, a cutscene will start and then this trigger will get deleted. And this trigger is actually going to be a permanent trigger. So even after the cutscene runs, it doesn't get deleted. You can run this as many times as you want. And this is what the cutscene is going to look like. So basically all you would do is just drag in one of these trigger objects and then open up its creation code and write in something like this. So all you have to do is change this one variable you declare kind of one big array, and then in every line of the array, we have a different kind of scene. So this first one, the first thing the cutscene does is set the camera mode. Basically, it sets it to move to an object, and then the object I tell it to move to is the scout. Then the scout changes its X scale, it emotes, the cutscene waits, and so on. So this is just an example of a cutscene. And this is how simple it is to outline new scenes. And obviously there's quite a variation in the number of things that you can do. So, and then in this one right here, I have some more events and quite a few scripts that we could go through. So I have stuff for fading, for changing variables, playing sounds, and we'll get to these hopefully throughout this little series on cutscenes. So for now, I'll just run the game and show you these events. So we can move as the king right now, but as soon as we hit this pink trigger, the cutscene's gonna start. So we have our king walk over, there's a little interaction here. There we go, so we have moving and creating objects. And finally, once the cutscene is finished, the camera moves back to the player and we regain control. And we can move around again. So you can also see that the trigger was deleted as soon as the cutscene was activated. But if I come over to this one, so for example, if we try to walk on the bridge, this little guy gets angry at us and we walk away. And go on it again, the cutscene is going to get triggered no matter how many times we go on to that. All right, moving on. Let's jump in and consider what we need our cutscene system to do. So we want to make our system flexible enough to handle a wide range of scenes and events. So for example, moving characters, moving the camera, playing sounds, changing rooms, creating or destroying objects, changing variables, starting dialogue, and so on. Really, the list is endless here. And even if we don't know everything we need right now, it would be great if we could always expand on the system later without breaking everything. And we need to consider how the cutscene system is going to work. So as I said earlier, cutscenes are a sequence of scripted events, meaning we have a bunch of actions that we want to perform in a set order. So here is just a example of a cutscene. So we want to start at that first action and then work our way down, performing each of them until they're finished. So the problem we need to solve is how do we set up a bunch of code so that it's ready to execute with all the right variables, but we don't have it run immediately. We only want to run it at that specific time. Well, we can think of cutscenes like state machines for object states. So just like we might understand that an enemy object can be in different states, such as idle, where it might be doing nothing, patrolling, where it's going backwards and forwards, and attacking, where we take a swing at the player, we can also have our cutscenes performing in a similar way, though instead of states we might call them scenes. So we could set up our cutscene like a large switch statement, like we might use for states. So we could have a variable called scene, and depending on what scene is equal to, we will execute different code. So in the case that it's equal to zero, we'll execute the code for fading in. And if it's equal to one, then we'll move the player over 30. 
and so on. We keep going until that cutscene is finished. So now we need to consider just how we're getting from one scene to the other. So for example, if we're currently fading in, we need some sort of exit case that will increment the scene variable, causing us to go to the next piece of code. And we'll want each sort of action to have a different kind of exit case, so they'll all be kind of waiting for a variable. So for example, if we're moving a character, we need to be watching to see if it has reached its destination, or if we're fading in or out, we want to wait until that fade has reached full opacity. But in the end, they're all going to have to increment the scene variable so that we can go to the next bit of code. Essentially, this is all the logic that you'll need to have a working cutscene system. Ideally, you'll want to generalize this as much as possible. So for example, instead of having specific code for moving every time, you could make use of some reusable scripts that will handle the movement for you. So all you'll have to do is give it, for example, an object, an X and Y position, and the speed at which it moves. And you could reuse that script every time you want to move an object. And the same goes for moving the camera, starting dialogue, and fading in and out. So you'll want to make scripts that perform the action, wait for their exit case, and then increment the scene variable. So we're starting to get a better idea of what our system is going to look like. But at the moment, it's not the most user-friendly. Each cutscene is going to have to require a different object, each with their own switch statements. And also changing these cases around or adding new scenes in later can be quite a nuisance because you have to renumber all of your cases. So let's consider a different way of setting this out. So we know that we're going to have scripts that we want to perform, such as a move character script or a setting the camera script. And we know that we have some specific arguments we'll want to input into the scripts each time. So what we could do is just store all of these values, say in an array, and then just pull them out when the time is right and input them into the appropriate script. So we could have the script stored in the first index of the array, and then all of the arguments will be in the next positions. And now it's important to note here that putting a script in like this, so just move character without the brackets, is different to writing move character and then having those brackets because this code right here refers to the ID of the script, but this code will actually run the script. So if we input this, which is the ID, then we are storing the ID of the script and we can refer to this later when we want to run it. So there is a function called script execute and it takes in these arguments. So the first argument is always gonna be the index of the script you wanna run. And then all of the other arguments are gonna be the arguments you want to input into that script. So writing this move character object x, y, and speed is equivalent to writing script execute the move character scripts and then giving it all those arguments. So if we come back to our array that is storing for each scene the script and then all the arguments of the script, we're going to just need to set this out in a way where it can handle any number of arguments. But more on that later, let's come back to how we're storing the information. So we can create an array for all of our scenes. So for each of them, the script will always go into that first position and then the arguments fill the rest of the array. And then when we have all of those arrays, we could put all of them into one giant array. So kind of having arrays within arrays, almost forming a kind of grid. And we could call this, this whole array, which is storing all of this kind of individual scene arrays. We could call this scene information or scene info and then actually use our scene variable from before to access each individual scene. So for example, if scene is equal to zero, then we will pull out the first array, which contains all the information for the first scene. If it's equal to one, then we'll get the second one. And then we can just use our script execute function to have our scripts running properly. So all this means that when it comes to actually writing what your scene is, it'll appear like this. You'll have your scene info variable equal to one array and then for each line you'll have the arrays of your scenes and personally i think this is quite an intuitive way to look at it because you can see at a glance what your cutscene should be doing for all your different actions and this means that we can just create one generic cutscene object and all we have to do is change the one variable scene info then the cutscene object will be able to take all this information and just run the cutscene, no matter how many scenes we give it and no matter how many arguments are in the scripts, assuming we get everything working. So let's jump into a project and get to actually coding this. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is come over to our objects, create a new one, and I'm gonna call this OBJ cutscene. And this is gonna be our general object that we create every single time we want a cutscene. 
So we want this to be very generalized so that it will always run whatever information that we give it. So the only thing that we're going to be changing about this object is its variable scene information. So let's come into its create event and we'll just initialize some variables for now. So let's go scene info and I'm just going to set this to minus one. So technically we don't even really need to do this right now because the scene information isn't going to be kind of set up in this general object itself. We'll be changing this variable probably in the script or the trigger that we use to make a cutscene event. So all the information for all of the scenes, so remember this is going to be kind of one array storing a bunch of different arrays, all, all containing information about the scenes. We will be changing this later. So next we're gonna need scene, and we'll set this to zero for now because this will be the first scene. It will be the first entry in our scene information array. And this is also going to be changing as we go through our cutscene to access the different entries. Now, as an example, the first kind of script that we're gonna be making as a kind of scene is going to be a cutscene wait. So for this, I'm going to need a time variable. And I'm just gonna set this to zero for now. Next, let's come over and make that script. So in our scripts, don't worry about these for now. These are just a couple things I've set up to illustrate later. So let's make a new script, call it cutscene wait, and let's just describe this script here using the description. So if you don't know about this, this is just a way to get some information about your script to pop up, just like other scripts do. So for example, we can type arg seconds, and now if we type in cutscene wait, if we wait for a second, it should come up in the sort of descriptor here telling us what arguments we need to input into the script. So now, what you have to imagine is that whatever script it is currently kind of accessing from the scene information, it's going to continuously run it. So every single step of the game. So every step of the game for the cutscene wait, I am going to increment the timer variable. And then, of course, we need the exit case or the finished case for this particular scene, for the waiting. So depending on what this argument here, so argument zero of the script is equal to, however many number of seconds we've set it to wait for. So if timer is larger than or equal to the number of seconds, but we have to times it by the room speed, because of course this is going to be, if we just left it as argument zero, and for example, we said four seconds, it would go off after four steps. But to get the number of seconds, we have to times it by the room speed, which is probably either 30 or 60 in your project. So if the timer is larger than whatever, however many number of seconds you said, that is going to be the exit case. So what I'm going to do here is have timer equal zero. And of course, we want to increment the scene. So this will make scene go from zero to one or whatever it's up to. But actually, instead of writing scene plus plus, I'm actually going to take this, create another script, call it cutscene end action. And I'm going to put it in here. And the reason for this is that we're actually going to change what it does later on, but we're not going to want to update all of the scripts from C++ to whatever we change it to. So this way we can just change it in one place. So coming back, we're just going to write cutscene and action. Now for testing purposes, I've actually created another kind of demo script that we're going to use for the cutscene called create box at mouse. This is probably not something you're going to be doing, but it's just to test it. So I have an object called obj box. Basically, this is just a blank blue box that is going to be created whenever I press my mouse button. So this script, unlike the wait script, it's basically going to keep running and it's going to keep checking if I press the mouse button. So it doesn't take any arguments. It really just waits for some kind of input. And then when it finds that input, that is going to trigger the end of that scene. So we're going to go and create a box and then we're gonna end the scene just like before with our wait. All right, so say in our obj cutscene, what I'm going to do is set up a scene. And to do that, we would just type scene info equals. So this is a way of declaring an array. So you can do it just like this normally, and then you'd have your entries, but you can also do it over multiple lines. And you can even put the entries themselves over multiple lines, which is exactly what we'll be doing. But instead of just numbers, remember, we're actually going to have arrays within arrays, like that. So for the first one, let's just say that we're going to wait for an input to create a box at whatever our mouse position is. 
And remember, that one doesn't have any arguments, so all we do is store the script. For our cutscene wait, let's say that we're going to wait for two seconds. So what we would do is just comma and then write the argument to. And then let's say we can create another box. Then we wait four seconds and then it's going to let us create another box and then that will be it. So that is going to be our cutscene. Let's have a think about how we're going to get this to run. So like I said before, in the step event, what we're going to do is make use of the script execute function. So now what we have to do is pull out the appropriate index. So it's asking for the index. So this is going to be the kind of name of the script. So we're going to have to, depending on what scene is, grab the array from scene info and then grab the first entry in this array. So first off, let's grab the current scene array that we're on. Just like that. And then we can get current scene and then the first entry in the current scene, right? So that will be getting this. And now this is where we're going to run into our first problem, right? So for the create box at mouse, it only has one argument. So this will run just fine if we have it like this. But when it comes time to running the cutscene wait, this actually needs to have a, another argument. So we would actually have to go and put current scene one, because this is how you put in the additional arguments for this function. So depending on the number of arguments that we have, we're going to have to do this differently. So we're actually going to have to get the length of this array to get the number of arguments stored in that entry. And the way that we do that is just get the length of the array and then minus one. Because for example, the length of this array is two, but the number of arguments is one. So that would look something like this. So we would get the length of the current scene array. And then depending on what that is, we could use a switch statement. And then depending on the length of this minus one, in the case that it's zero, we just run the script and we don't do anything else. In the case that it has one argument, then we input that one argument and we keep going. And to be honest, there isn't really any way around this. And you'll need to keep going down like this, creating a lot of cases if you have scripts that do have lots of arguments and you want to be safe. But for now, we'll just have those. So if we just drag this object into our room, so I've just set up an empty room that basically has nothing. And we drag in our cutscene object and run the game. We should have our cutscene running. So remember, what it is doing right now is just waiting for our input of the mouse. So it shouldn't be doing anything else. And then as soon as we click, it's going to direct us to wait and we can't do anything else. We won't be able to create any objects and it's going to keep going like this. So let's see if this works. So it's running. Let's click. There we go. If I click, it's not going to create anything else. Now, after two seconds are up, we should be ready to create another one. There we go. And if I click again, it won't let me create any more for four seconds. And then finally, the last one, there we go. And it's the end of the scene. So now this error is going to be popping up because it is trying to access the next entry in the array, but it doesn't exist. So we're going to actually need to take care of this. We could have, for example, in the cutscene and action, a check to see if the scene is larger than or equal to the array array length 1D of the scene information minus one because the arrays start at zero and the last actual entry there will be. So for example, if the length is two, then the last entry is actually going to be entry one because the first entry is zero. So zero one makes two entries. So if that's the case, then what we want to do is destroy the object. All right. So that is the basics of what we have to do to set up our cutscene object. Next time, I'm going to go through some more examples of scripts that you can use and also refine this system a little bit so that we don't have this quite ugly switch statement here. Thanks for watching, guys. That's it for today. So today's topic on cutscenes was actually chosen by a vote on Patreon. So thank you to everyone who voted and thank you for supporting me to create these tutorials. Some special shout outs to Semimyth, Alina S, Ricky C, Ian Seckington, Danielle Hargrave, Max Molinaro, Hunter T, Thomas M, The Great Poultry, XD Game Studio, Doan Techman, and Spock 2018. I hope you guys are well, and I'll see you in the next video.